Hi, everyone. Welcome to the TimingResearch.com Crowd Forecast News, episode number 321 for November 29th, 2021. We are recording this at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. My name is David Cosmeter. I'm the creator of TimingResearch.com, and you should be seeing my screen right now. And I'm going to display uh, whatever we talk about throughout this episode. So uh, today I've arranged for Anka Metcalf and Norman Hallett to join us, as well as the option professor to moderate. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to him. Sure. Okay, guys, <clears throat> pretty big 48 hours here to talk about. So we're going to get into it. And uh, before we get into it, let's introduce ourselves. So uh, starting out with Norm, a little background on yourself, Norm, and what's going on at your company. Okay, do I have to wear a mask during this or am I no, okay? No, I don't think so. Not, okay. not according to Santos anyway. Okay, social distancing. I, um, my name is Norman Hallett. I'm known as the disciplined trader because my focus has always been on the mental and emotional issues of traders. I, I believe that 90% of traders are struggling and uh, I believe it's directly because 90% of traders do absolutely nothing or next to nothing about maintaining their mental and emotional uh, abilities and consistencies in trading. So that's where I've focused. I do a little bit on the um, on simple trading plans because I have come across uh, a number of people with lousy trading plans, but uh, you won't find them in this group with Anka and, uh, and Jim. So uh, I'm gonna stick to the mental and emotional here. Um, but um, the discipline trader has been around for a while, uh, almost we're on our, um, well, almost, just about two decades now. So um, that's what I'm about. And I'm really glad to be here today. Sure. Great. And of course, uh, in the last 48 hours, the mental aspects of the market has been uh, never more important or <laughs> obvious uh, yeah. that you need to have a good set of uh, disciplines in order to uh, you know, endure. Uh, Anka, a little bit about yourself and uh, again, what's going on down at your company? Okay, so hi everyone, and thank you for having me on the show. Um, so my name is Anka Metcalf, and I'm the CEO and founder of TradeOutLoud.com, which is a trading education firm that focuses on educating individuals how to day trade, swing trade, uh, basically all asset classes, whether it's futures or stocks, so cryptocurrencies or forex, any asset class. Uh, and uh, we also uh, provide services that back up the education that we provide. We have transparent track record on our website. So if you go under our services, you can find that very easily at the bottom of the page. Um, I have been a professional independent trader focused on um, futures, equities, um, and I've also been trading a lot Forex, but um, for the last about eight years or so, I have transitioned mostly to um, currencies uh, via futures. And I have been doing this for about 18 years. And prior to becoming a professional independent trader, I come with 10 plus years in investment banking. Uh, I'm also the designer of a proprietary trading system uh, that is based on uh, price support resistance, but there's a little catch to this because my focus is on confluence support resistance. So what that means is that I'm focused more on to support or resistance areas that uh, provide inflection points for price uh, and where you have multiple layers that are colliding into the same area, same location. Uh, also, specific trigger ties have been day trading for a very long time, for over two decades, and I have developed specific trigger times about five years into the process of my uh, switcheroo of careers. And uh, these trigger times are uh, predominantly happening every single day at specific, uh, at specific uh, times. And uh, they develop specific uh, setups. So uh, I like to combine that uh, confluence price or, uh, or resistance along with the trigger time. And of course the specific price uh, and and, uh, and and added to this uh, chart synchronicity and divergency because that is so important to stick with the uh, strong uh, assets in a strong market and the weak assets into a weak market and that way you're going to see much more uh, easier follow through into your targets. Okay, sounds great. And again, we'll get into it uh, further, but in the last 48 hours, obviously having a game plan and having discipline would be a very good thing in your pocket. That's what Norm can help you with. And uh, either shorter term trading or swing trading, you know, keeping things on a relatively short leash, be it bullish or bearish, uh, has certainly been worthwhile in the last 48 hours as well. So um, with regards to our first question of the week always is uh, S&P opened up at 4628. 
Uh, the low today, 46.25. I'm using SPX as a uh, as a uh, indicator, and uh, we're currently up uh, quite a bit. So um, between 48, uh, 46.28 today on the opening, where are we going to be by Friday? Starting with Norm. Well, you know that was a pretty uh, dramatic move yesterday, and um, my feeling is that we will be uh, lower than we are right at this print right now. Right. Uh, by the end of the week. Okay. And uh, your confidence level is better than 50-50 or what do you think? My confidence level is around the 65, 66 and three quarter era, two thirds. Yeah. I love right. that. <laughs> and, and that's it. Two thirds is good. Uh, that's a majority to get somebody in trouble. I forgot. Is it a lawsuit <laughs> or two thirds majority? No, it's, I think it's uh, in the House of Representatives. Well, I, have anyway, very, very I just heard that two thirds. I heard that two thirds majority sometime. I'm having a flashback. I can't remember where. Um, all right. So let's talk about um, Anka's view. Uh, 4628. Uh, the horses are running. Where will they end up? I think they're going to uh, this week. We're going to end up over 4700 in S&P. OK. Uh, my conviction level, level would be yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, my conviction level would be about 80 to 85 percent. OK, well, you know, I did a little history myself on the VIX. And, you know, in the last year when we went towards 25, 35 on the VIX, um, it either was a low point and within one or two weeks, we were right back up at the highs or in September, October, it was about one month. So when this VIX jumps up towards the 2535 neighborhood, it has correlated to a very good uh, buy point. And it does look like that 4585 temporarily is not a bad point to defend, huh? Right. Yeah, that's, I think, where you're thinking. It's going to be similar yeah. to the other drops where the turnaround time was very brief. Correct. I got you. I'm with you. And like I say, that's not uh, that's certainly not unreasonable because history actually that's the way it has worked out. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, you know, a, a week or two can mean you get choppy action. And I think that's where norms coming in is that, you know, we're getting a nice big jump and then we could have some problem at 46. Eight. Where, where's your numbers where we could have problems this week, uh, Norm? You must have some. Well, uh, you know, I, I, the, the thing is that with markets like this and I, I, I do expect a a lot of chop. I mean, we've already seen yeah. kind of market swing. I'm, you know, I, I have, and it's very seldom, I don't think you've ever heard me talk about fundamental influences on my trading, but I'm looking over the next couple of weeks uh, of, of looking at actually trading the short side of this with, with close stops. Okay. Um, and, and the reason is what's, what's happening uh, as far as uh, two, or I'm looking for that third storm that will make the perfect storm. The first storm is this uh, uh, is Omicron, uh, of which I pledged, incidentally, in the in the uh, in the sixties. In the sixties, but um, the Omicron uh, variant and what's going on with the debt ceiling, which I think is an important factor mm -hmm. coming into what's going to play in the market over the next couple of weeks as that date gets closer. I'm looking for whatever that third thing is, which really could cause. Or could it be the infrastructure thing gets stalled out in the Senate? Uh, that could be it, but uh, you know, I think that there's, um, I don't know that people know the meaning of that yet, but mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, it could be that, uh, but I, I think the market could be susceptible to, I mean, I'm looking here at, at the chart that you have right up here that, you know, that it's a kind of a classic looking double top, but we've already taken a lot of the energy out of that with uh, yesterday's movement. Today's right. response is typical for what the market's been doing for the last 10 years. Right. Uh, but I do think we're ahead and chop it. But I do think those fundamental factors are keeping me away from wanting to be long for the next yeah. couple of weeks. Yeah. And uh, also, if we get a big jobs report Friday and it looks like the, the Fed taper could be accelerated in the middle of... Uh, December, that's another factor as well, I guess, right? That could be the, that, that's more likely to be a, you know, a third, a third storm on the horizon. Yeah. But it usually, like I say, uh, you know, where... uh, if, if it, if it turns out to be like September and October, uh, then there's going to be a lot more wood to chop. If it turns out to be the other VIX spikes that we've had, then Anka uh, probably has uh, got her, uh, her, uh, her parameters uh, set to the right uh, measurements. Um, at any rate, uh, let's go and uh, look at some of the things you're looking at. Norm, you alluded to a few of them. Anka, what are some of the ones you're looking at, uh, you know, factors that are going to come into play as we look down the street? 
Okay, so first of all, I'm not buying the new variant. It's not. It doesn't mean that the variant is not there. So no, don't get me wrong. Uh, but I don't believe that fear uh, was uh, the driving factor for the market lower on Friday. No, it was a combination of low volume, high volatility. The market was open only half the day, and I think it was a uh, it was a forced sell, which institutions are often doing uh, mm -hmm. just to buy cheaper. This way, uh, they drove the price lower. I mean. For example, in the Dow, we just had like what more than a thousand points from last week, and uh, into uh, for example, last week uh, we had a high of forty seven forty, I believe it was, and then it came down to forty five eighty seven. Well, that's a really appealing spot. Plus, it rotated off of the yep. ten EMA on the weekly chart, and that is a highly technical point that institutions are looking for. So they just bought on discount into the forty five eighty area. So yep. it was a really technical move on their behalf. And I was actually talking to someone on Friday saying that we're going to get a, we're going to a pretty, I'm pretty sure we're going to get a bounce, if not a gap up on Monday that will continue with the rally. Right. The other thing is that Biden uh, showed up today and he said that uh, there are not going to be any lockdowns this winter. So quote mm -hmm. unquote, this winter. So I don't know what's going to happen for, you know, later on, but at least he said that there are not going to be any lockdowns this winter. So that means that the market is free and clear uh, of any kind of, uh, of any kind of problems that are going to come from this side of the story. So I think it was all narrative, the sell. I think it yeah. was a highly technical sell. Uh, the market and, uh, is well, right. Anka, do you think it also was stop loss uh, selling? Uh, yes, absolutely. They clearly absolutely. 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 So what happens when they do these four sells, a lot of traders are having their uh, have have their stops. So what happens is that algos have a, a short triggers where those stops are because they know where the majority of traders have their stops. So they're betting on buying from them to short. So borrowing from them to short. So that's that's why we saw the snowball that happened on Friday because it was low volume and this is what they did. They rolled it down and now they bought it back up. Mm -hmm. So basically what happened is in less than a, let's say, let's say in a trading session, if you're looking at the futures market close to, let's say 20 hours of uh, mm -hmm. 20 hours to 21 hours now, mm -hmm. uh, we have recuperated and we're back into the Friday highs. We're actually trading above Friday's levels. So that means that basically Friday was totally erased. And this is the driving factor that makes me believe that yeah. it was a four cell activity. And I even said it on Friday, this doesn't smell like a fear cell. It, it doesn't have the components for a fear cell. So I also have, uh, you know, in mind, all, we have a, such a rich agenda this week. Uh, we have Powell that is testifying tomorrow and on Wednesday. Uh, we have an OPEC meeting later on Thursday. Uh, and then like you mentioned, you know, we have unemployment rates on Friday. We have average hourly earnings. We have a lot of things that are happening this week and a lot of things that can uh, change the trajectory of the market. But what I'm seeing with the technical patterns of if you're completely a technical trader and I am 99.9% .9 technical trader, I do pay attention uh, into earnings to fundamentals because I do come from the fundamental side and I can't ignore that. But this is such a strong technical rotation um, buy that you're seeing right now into the S&P. We just took out Friday's high. So that is uh, that is the buy formation. I know it is into a prior pivot low and that prior pivot low is uh, from, uh, I think it was November 10th when we had the, the last uh, dip into the market, but we started buying off of that. So if, it, if, if you, you know, put your curse a little bit over that prior pivot low, Mm -hmm. uh, right there. Exactly. Over that prior pivot low, you can see that we're actually triggering a little bit higher right now. Yeah. So where's that uh, around 4660 and 4680, right? That exactly. So if you put your, yeah. yeah, if you put your cursor just at the bottom of the wick, okay. You can see that that is the exact level when they started to buy this today at right. the New York trading session. That's the level where they started to buy. So it, it's technically super interesting. And as you can see, we are pretty much free and clear to navigate towards uh, the 4,700 into the top of Thursday's candle. And that's where the 4,700 is. And we were stuck there into that 47 because option expiration. 
Yeah. And they pinned it for the longest time into the 4,700. So from a week, two weeks ago, two weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, but, you know, would you say, would either you guys want to uh, uh, finiate on uh, the jobs report? If the jobs report were to come out very hot, would that be uh, gasoline on the... Uh, on the Fed, uh, well, let's call it for the market. Would it be uh, would it be water on the on the uh, excuse me water on the market, as the Fed would be more inclined to have to uh, accelerate their tapering if we had a really hot report Friday. Conversely, if the report is a little mixed or a little weaker, would that be the green light for the stock market because that would take the Fed out of the ball game as far as any kind of accelerated taping. What do you think, Norm? About I, you know, I just think it's going to be uh, the reaction there. Uh, I think it's going to largely be wherever the market is at that point. I, I think I have a better idea. I, I mean, I I like the movement. To, I mean, you got to be got to be impressed again with the market movement today. But I'm not convinced. Uh, you know, I'm I'm a I'm a guy that that generally waits for the close. Yeah. Um, and, and I. I just don't think we're going to close in this area that we're even in right now. It's just my, own, I'm not long. I'm not sure. In other words, I am a technical yeah. trader. I think anybody that, that has long-term success really bends toward the technical. And, and I, you you're know, lean, I'm, I'm you're leaning of, to the word chop. You're leaning towards well, the word it's, chop. I'm, I'm leaning to the word chop, but I'm, I, yeah. I think there's enough for me. Uh, what I like to do is to choose a preferred side and trade from that side. Okay. Because that that helps yeah. me to be uh, more um, determined for more clear, uh, more clear. Yeah, it it, it, yeah. it keeps my it keeps me, um, and yeah. I'm willing to get stopped out. Um, you know, with short. With no, short I mean, losses. you know, if you're going south on nine I ninety five, you'd like to have that as your main uh, as your main uh, direction, as opposed to getting off at every five exits and turning around all the time. Right, like I said, for the next two weeks, I'm favoring the short side, and I'm not. There you, you go. Know, and, 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 you know, I'm not trading off the daily, you know, I'm, I'm looking I mean, at the, your general the theory is that we've had a double top around 4740. The market is on the defensive. It had a rally here today, rather than I, trying to buy the rally. You're looking for some type of a resistance that it's going to stop and maybe give you another opportunity to play for another rendezvous towards the lower end. That's right. In fact, it, maybe even a check of the October low. But I, I just think that th there's a better possibility now than there have been in a couple of the previous corrections mm -hmm. that this may not be over because of those fundamental factors uh, that and, and, I, and I think I could just rattled off four or five other reports that may encourage, um, you know, disappointment and a doubt. So I'm, um, you know, I'm, I'm 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 looking toward the south side, and I'm waiting for the trigger. And and I I, I need to see what this market closes at today. I mean, tomorrow, you know, what the expectation for me to, was to see a um, you know a rebound of some sort today, but then a fade. Yeah. Uh, the 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 the, the, op the counter days are usually on Tuesday. Maybe that's just an old rule that's in the back of my head. But that's yeah, what turn around Tuesday, for. that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, well, but, I mean, if you look at the graph, a lot of what we're talking about is very much illustrated. Um, you know, Anka's view is it's going to be more like the pullbacks we had in June, uh, July, August, where we come down and test the blue line. Then we get right back above the yellow line and then we're off to the races a little bit. And of course, that's what it looks like it's doing right now. But if it is, does turn out to be more of a uh, September, October view, uh, then obviously we're going to violate the blue line and then we're going to have uh, some white knuckles for a little while, but then ultimately mm -hmm. it might get back on the bicycle again. I mean, looking to go higher is the favorite horse here right now. I mean, it's yeah. five to two. Uh, yeah, you know, and, and to be honest with you, and the, and the price evidence right there obviously illustrates that that is the bet. Yeah. You know, because it does look very similar to the turnarounds we saw in the other months that I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, of course, like you say, if this thing goes home, uh, underneath the yellow line and for whatever reason takes out the blue uh, then obviously you know a more severe correction like september october could be in the cards but that's not what it's saying right now but but I, i'd be interested in asking Uncle a question because of her bank back, back, uh, banking background and that's her view of the of the where, where the 30 where the bond is trading right now 
Yeah. Um, um, Anka, do you want to opine on the, the, the interest rate picture, which obviously has been very volatile, and that's why the stock market volatility probably picked up. Like you were saying, it wasn't the variant that caused that sell-off. It was probably the volatility that the bond market had when yields went up towards 170, yet the stock market volatility remained rather low. On Friday, they decided to get that volatility back in line with the bond volatility. So now we are where we are. Uh, the 30 year is closer to 190 ish and change. 10 year is back above 150. Um, how do you feel the interconnection between the yield on 10 year and 30 year are and the S&P? Um, and I want to go back a little bit to the discussion that, you know, that Norman, uh, Norman was pointing out. And I said that, you know, for this week, uh, I see it at 4,700 just because it has a really massive upside on the trading day today. And it came with, with relative volume. So the bounce back did not come on low volume. So it's a little bit more sustainable. Mm -hmm. So I do like the 4,700. However, uh, I do want to point out that if we take out Friday's low, only then and only then I'm going to be very short-term bearish. I'm not going to be long-term bearish. I don't see any devaluation. I don't see anything else. And plus, if you take a look at the stock market and individual stocks, you have like mm -hmm. tons of tons of uh, ma uh, massive uh, support and also rotations that are happening throughout. Uh, even on the Dow stocks, the Dow has been relatively weak with Russell relatively weak. So that's why, you know, I really don't put a lot of... Uh, uh, effort into trading these short days or whatever is happening into these short days, I really don't care uh, because uh, short trading sessions that is on Friday because they're really not true to price. Uh, but you're getting a lot of action, for example, in stocks like Home Depot, like Apple, like Google massively up today. You have NVIDIA, uh, all these tech stocks, Microsoft, Facebook, um, Netflix is holding really well. Amazon is holding really well. So you have a plethora of fast stock stocks that are holding. You have uh, oil, which is pretty much today stabilizing. So it's not highly to impact. So as long as you have a pretty robust financials, because we were talking about financials, financials actually on Friday uh, after the uh, after <clears throat> the big momentum to the downside, uh, they popped up. A little bit right so they form in some cases double bottom or inside yeah. formations and they started to uh they started to pop up so i'm looking at the jp morgan's the bank of america etc you know all of these companies that are uh, all of these stocks that are under the dow and because the dow was the one that had the relative weakness yeah. but i could see like a pretty solid rotation in, even in the dow stocks for example unh is at a trigger point right now it's at a super important inflection point and from this mm -hmm. point on it's going to go higher um, for example, you know, Boeing has been stabilizing, but to go back to the bonds. Uh, so to me, bonds are totally unattractive at this point. Uh, there's no telling or forecasting what the relation or uh, what they're going to be doing because there's not interest built into the technical patterns. So once you don't have the interest into the technical pattern, then the narrative is not going to follow. So uh, the, so for this week, there is one level that I'm watching in the 30 year. So whether you're watching bonds futures or um, I'm just going to give a, um, you know, a trigger point for bonds futures or whether you're watching uh, TLT, but uh, for bond futures, for example, there's a 161.27. Uh, 20, so if it trades above that point, that's where a little bit of interest is going to come in. Not a lot, not a lot, because it really needs to prove itself. I would just stay away and I'm staying away from bonds. I am not even looking at the reaction in bonds. I'm mostly looking at the interaction between stocks, valuation, earnings. This is, uh, this is 100% my focus right now. Yeah, gotcha. I um I've been noticing um, that the quote unquote uh, reopening trade um, has really been um, not very good. So um, we've got Con Carnival Cruise has had a <clears throat> a fifty two week high of um, thirty one. It's trading at eighteen, and if you turn towards uh, the Marriott, uh, you'll find it had a fifty two week high of uh, one seventy one. It's at one fifty three. And if you look towards uh, MGM Grand, your casinos, it had a 52-week high of uh, 51. It's trading at 41. So I, does it seem to you guys that if money's coming into the market, they're going to go to 
your um, your uh, large cap stuff like NVIDIA and Microsoft and Google and Facebook and that kind of stuff. And they don't really believe in this opening story. What do you think, Norm? Yeah, I, I, I tend to agree with that, but I'm, I'm going to <clears throat> step aside for that because that's not really my area of concentration. Okay, yeah. I concentrate yeah. primarily on, uh, <clears throat> I do do a lot of foreign currencies in futures and uh, mm -hmm. and I do some stocks on my own, but that particular question, I wouldn't be uh, capable. Oh, let's go over to the dollar. Dollar is, uh, you know, uh, people thought it was going to have some problems here at 94 or it's at 96. Are you a believer we're going to 100 on this thing or do you believe this area up here could could be a resistance? Well, you know, I, I believe that, uh, you know the whole the whole inflation scare is has been overdone, mm -hmm. and, and I may be wrong. Uh, there's a lot of people smarter than I that that believe it. But in looking at some of the pricing action of some of the commodities that that I watch, like the soybeans and um, and some of the softs, I just think that that um, that, that the, the inflation story, a lot of it is behind us and not ahead of us, and therefore. Um, you know, I'm I'm expecting the dollar to to, uh, to, to not to do much from here. I, I think I think it's it's more of a this is the kind of I mean, look, at, am I looking at it right now? Yeah. In other words, you know, it, uh, you know it's, what, like I, it's meandering higher, you know, this is uh, the agricultural one. Let's, oh, uh, let's go yeah, back to the dollar, dollar real quick so he can talk about that. And then uh, we will talk about soybeans because, you know, they had a big run up to 17 almost. They went back to 12 and. It'd be interesting to see if you think this is an area where it's the low. You know, if you go way back to April, you'll you'll see a peak there. That's uh, that, yeah. that that we've been. Oh, I mean, it's a nice it's a nice looking round bottom, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> With a double bottom. I mean, uh, I expect some accumulation here in the dollar because I think uh, the inflation picture is going to be confusing. Um, but I, I I just think that um, that, that that story is behind us and anytime a market moves uh based on 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 that i i'd be looking to fade it but uh again what currency would, of choice do you have um uh, yen well euro? my currency of choice is really right now although the euro dollar has has really been very uh uh very very been steady and uh, beautifully uh perfect for uh, for a technical analyst, I, I tend to move toward the uh, the Japanese yen. Uh, All right, because, let's take a look at the yen. Because again, my my basic story about um, uh, about the stock market being a little susceptible here, and I'm only talking about the next couple of weeks. Yeah. Because in the next couple of weeks, the the, the susceptibility, you know, the, the Japanese yen has somewhat become some sort of a uh, a, a hedge a against. Volatility, kind of, it's, it hasn't taken the place of gold in, in any respect. But I think that if you're looking for um, a situation that you can control in the currencies, uh, and you wanted to go against what you're seeing right here, if you believe that what you're seeing is the beginning of a bottom, um, even though the market has. Um, so look at that divergence on your RSI. You got to like that, don't you? Know yeah. Well, I do. I was going to bring that up. You and I always talk about that, mm -hmm. uh, and, and the fact that we really haven't extended even with this move. Um, you know, past something ugly. So, yeah. you know, I, I can see it. What is that? Is that the 20 and the 50? What am I looking at here? 20 and the, the, the moving average. The moving averages are 21 and 50. Um, 21 yeah. and 50. Um, you know, I just, uh, I, I look at the eight a lot, as you know, the eight. Yeah, well, that's a short leash, right? And, and yeah, and and of course we've we've killed that through here. But I, I many times a market will back up. You can see on the way down how it backs up toward uh, uh, the important moving averages and then and then extends. But you can see that you see the uh, right right in the middle area. Right? You're almost there. Uh, yeah. It's uh, I guess the 15th of November, right around there. Yeah, you got to so you got to buy a signal right there. Well, I got that sell signal. See that sell sell signal right there? The long, the, it's the longest okay. bar in that in the recent chart. Where, oh no, you <laughs> to the right, right dip, 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 to the left, five bars to the left. Uh, that one right there. That hesitation when you have a, a series of small bodies and then that move through the eight. That is a very huge signal mm -hmm. to me on the short side, sh on, on the short term side. And you can see how the market matured toward uh, un until we got a very similar. Uh, formation here where you had a couple of bodies of hesitation again I, I look at the bodies and then the a strong movement uh, uh, to the upside which usually would correct toward to the uh, to the moving average and then continue from there so you know I'm looking for some upside here and I'm looking some for some reason to believe it I don't have my money in it yet 
But I do think that once we start developing a technical look, I think this this market could have legs to uh, you know to at least the um, uh, right around the ninety level. Um, so that's that's what I'm looking at as far as currencies are concerned. But it's got to get past 80, 88, 50 and so on. Sure. Um, hey, uh, Anka, I got a quick question for you. Yes. Uh, gro- growth versus value. I, I watched the growth to value ratio. So that's had me very positive on growth for the last couple of months after we had a big slide in growth. Uh, so after the, you know, September, October drop uh, growth, which means, you know, tech and, uh, you know, growth stocks, SPY, SP, SPYG or XLK to use two of them. Mm-hmm. They seem to have been the place to be as you look forward if rates are not going to be going above 175 on the 10 year, wouldn't mm. growth and tech be totally the place to be? I think so too, but he, uh, you know, here's what I'm thinking, you know, going back a little bit to what you uh, ha- actually have asked uh, Norman. Um, the truth of the matter is that I think that what happened on Friday was a little bit of, um, um, how should I put this? Uh, An anomaly? Manipulation. <laughs> It was what? Okay. Uh, manipulation. I think oh, the yeah, yeah. market was heavily manipulated <clears throat> on Friday. Yeah. Um, it was really bizarre because I was sitting here and uh, I was actually managing my trades and I was giving, you know, some of the stocks that are in uh, that I'm in a little bit of room uh, just because I, I, I saw what was happening in the market. I was like, this is not true to price. And uh, I also saw like at the same time, literally at the same time where the fear of the new coronavirus variant was coming in, Pfizer and Moderna, I mean, Moderna was up 22%, okay? So they, I think that at this point and all of the stocks, all the coronavirus stocks, I have a whole list of coronavirus stocks, including the tech stocks that you were saying, you know, the growth stocks and everything else. And they didn't really have sharp pullbacks, or even if they had sharp pullbacks, they no. took the price to extremely to the penny technical levels, right? Uh, where they would accumulate again. So that's why I'm thinking that this may not be, uh, you know, that sell off that you know we're thinking. Plus, if you look at you know seasonality speaking, this is a pullback time. And remember that markets always kind of pull back, whether, you know, it is in December in the first week or the second week, because we are going to experience a rough patch in December. And that's because we're going to have quadruple witching option expiration. But a week before that, we're going to have the futures contract roll, which is a big deal because that's going to be a lot of pinning uh, there as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, The volume is going to drip into the March contract. We're still going to have this contract open for about a week. So there's a lot of, (laughs) there are a lot of things that are going on there uh plus you know we're pretty much getting ready for the holidays let's see if we're going to get a santa claus rally then we're getting ready for uh window dressing january fix so there are a lot of things that are happening in december and i think that a lot of times and throughout the charts throughout price history we could see that we have this dip uh usually uh, just a couple of days after Thanksgiving. So uh, the fact that now it came right a day after, it was a little bit bizarre that it that this pullback happened. And, uh, the pullback happened like in half the trading session right. <laughs> and on low volume. <laughs> and, and typically if you look throughout the chart uh, on any kind of chart, you will definitely see like an SPX or any other chart, you will see that the pullbacks are so quick uh, and so steep. They want to get it over with in a day, maximum two days and done. Yep, yep, (laughs) yep. No, that's what's been going on, except except for September, October, where they extended a little bit more time. Exactly. And that was because we had quadruple witching option expiration. So you're saying the risk is, is that could come into play again. Yeah, yeah, that's what I think. Well, I'll tell you a little sidebar. You know how you were saying, you know, this uh, 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 variant stuff is really over, overdone, overdone, yep. and it's probably not going to be the most popular. I like to read everything, so I'm I'm like yeah. a Jeopardy. I'm a Jeopardy guy, you know. Um, the uh, most popular word in the uh, Merriam-Webster dictionary for 2021 mm-hmm. is vaccine. Yeah. <laughs> so when the most popular word in the dictionary is vaccine, it's not the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> You know the whole the whole idea of uh, of these quick 
corrections in the market that used to take a week or two weeks and now happen in hours or, or maybe a day maximum. Exactly. Really kind of flies in the face of, of uh, some of the old adages that I talk about, including, you know, uh, pull back Tuesday. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, I think people have to respect what they're seeing and not what they're feeling when they take a look at markets. That's why I always learn something from Anka, because uh, in general, I think that, um, you know, when you've, when you've seen markets from the banking area, you have kind of a conservative view. And yet, I don't think I, I, I Anka is willing to take chances, which I think makes you an interesting individual. So, so I, I agree that, um, you know, that, 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 you know, this is a whole new, uh, the last couple of years has really been a whole new ball game as far as, I mean, look at this run that we're looking at. Well, it comes from liquidity. I mean, there's no. only one word you need to explain the whole chart. It's liquidity. Right. And liquidity is tremendously in there. Ergo, the prices are tremendously high. And that's the risk in 2022 and 2023 is that the liquidity is taken away. And obviously, it's hard to keep the balloon going if the oxygen starts getting taken out, right? Yeah. So, I mean, that's a longer term view. But um, yeah, um, Norm, uh, with regards to um, any other uh, things that you're seeing coming up, because again, you know, your viewpoint is, uh, is really from the standpoint of there's a likelihood of chop in the near term, which means you're going to, you know, get some back and forth action. And then, of course, if you start, to, like Anka says, you start taking out last week's low, then you better hold on to uh, the highs of September, which are 4540. And I've got a, a 12 SMA on my five-year graph that comes in at 4540. So those are a couple of lines in the sand if, if the lows get taken out. But uh, yeah, I, I think there's some of the things that I do with, uh, uh, with my trading plan when I'm, when I'm looking at markets that I expect to, to be highly volatile and choppy is I do things like I don't hold positions overnight, for right. instance, no matter how strongly I feel about something. Right. Uh, I, I, I look to, um, I plan a trade before I take the trade. In other words, if something pops out at me and, and I didn't plan for it, I generally don't take that trade. If I'm, uh, if, if I'm, if I'm, if I believe that something is about to occur based, based on, um, you know, my technical truths and it, and it happens for me, those are the trades that I take. So I'm, I take trades that I plan. I take, and, and I don't th hold things overnight. These are the kinds of things that I do in, in a choppy market too, because I'm always defending, defend, defend, defend. Uh, and, um, you know, because, uh, the great thing about these markets is that they they run all the time. Right. And you can you can even you can make a lot of money on a five minute currency chart uh, that can uh, that 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 can just run of uh, five or six cents in the matter yeah. of th three when, when you had a a forty point um, a forty point risk. So I trade off the shorter charts. Yeah, and you're the, finding the currencies have enough volatility to make it worth your time. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, it's been a, it's been terrific with the with, with the euro dollar and the uh, those are the two that I focus on and, and the uh, and the Japanese yen. Uh, right, I'm going to I'm going to turn over to Anka in one second about some sectors, but I wanted to talk to you, uh, Norm, about a, a couple of things. We talked a little bit about the grains. So there could be some possibility in there, but let's talk about two things real quick: the metals and oil. And uh, yeah. let's look at the gold and get a viewpoint on how you're feeling there. Cause you know, it gave you a nice look like it was breaking out at 1870 and then boom, they pulled the rug out again. So what's going on here? Is this a head fake again? And now we're in the tank or is this? Well, I think you're looking at, you're looking at an equilibrium type price here, right around okay. you know, 1800, yeah, yeah, plus or minus. Yeah. I, I think that's where this market kind of belongs here. If, okay. I haven't, I haven't really been trading this unless it gets closer to 18, you know, gets over 1800 or, uh, or below it, but I, you know, I'm right now. I'm I've got my attention more on the, and you've noticed there's been a separation of action between gold and silver. I mean, you, sometimes you'll see silver up strongly. So you gold. like the silver better? Yeah. I, I, I no, I like copper. Copper. Okay, let's throw the copper up there. Um, the yeah, copper, copper above four dollars looks like a reasonable place, right? Well, I mean, it's it's been it hasn't been below four dollars, but uh, yeah, it, I'm saying, but as a, as a base, yeah. four dollars as your right. base. Yeah. I mean, it's got a nice base, but uh, you can see that it's 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 again uh, as it gets uh, closer to the four dollar level, 
um, 420, I'm looking at, at places to to go long. It's, um, yeah. but, I mean, this is the day. Are you saying, hey, listen, Norm, real quick. Do you think we have a position here where we hit a low just under 425? We had a move to 450. Now there's your pullback. And now the next move is your three move, which is going to take out 450 and go. Well, I, I have a, a not not quite yet. I, I, I okay. think we, we need to see what happens with the last couple of days. That's the formation that is that's the formation that, that concerns me. Again, when you have a certain degree of small bodies followed by a larger one through uh, you don't have to have the is that the eight there uh, through that that moving average. I, I, I think we'll probably, uh, you know, test we'll probably test. Uh, five or ten cents lower before we see what happens. I mean, it looks like to me we're going to test that low, but you know who knows? I mean, we could be looking at a little head and shoulders bottom here. But uh, all I'm saying is this is not a tradable entity right here. Uh, but I, I like the I, I like staying in markets that I believe have a chance to run. And I think again with the bills that are, they're going through Congress uh, and um, and the bill that was just passed. Once some of this market money is appropriated, I think you'll see some. Uh, some spending, some copper demand, and and, and I think this market could uh, yeah. could show I've us. Got, I follow some the stock. I follow the stocks on it, and like I say, this looks like about a sixty one percent drop off of the move from four eighteen to four fifty. So that is a neighborhood of look at like I'd watch it very closely because you know if it does start going up, copper is supposedly is very tight in supply, and to get new copper is very tough. And you don't have to worry about uh, Bitcoin being digital copper. Um, so. You know, I think copper and, of course, like you're saying, these infrastructure things going on and uh, and stuff like that. Um, it's really got a great story on a supply demand situation. And technically, mm -hmm. if it can hold this pullback and starts getting above your yellow and blue and then starts getting above the 450, it could be a very exciting market in the months ahead. huh? Yeah, I think so. And that's why I try to, even though I don't see I'm not making claim to what I expect here, other than let's see what happens from this sideways movement. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. that when you break one way or the other, and it could be lower. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Then, um, then uh, you know, that's that's going to be a, a series of trades that I think you can make some pretty good money on. Yeah. So you like that? Uh, you like that copper? And now let's turn over to the oil real quick because I want to get over to Anka and ask her a couple of questions on her uh, ideas. Um, mm -hmm. You know, these guys at J.P. Morgan, I just was hearing on Bloomberg, uh, they're talking like way over a hundred bucks and way over a hundred bucks after that. And the next, you know, they're looking just for the huge bull market here. And you know, um, that that's uh, you know they're pretty cheap right now. So uh, let's can you put the actual price of crude up and get an idea? And if you go back maybe on a 10 year graph or something long term, because these guys are talking. Uh, yeah, that's a WT years. crude. That's a, yeah. Uh, so, and this is only going back. If we could go back longer, get a perspective like when it used to be way higher, you know, uh, maybe something like a, a five year or something like that, where, you know, you encompass that move above 100. They got a longer term chart there. Yeah. Okay. So that gives you a little bit of a wide perspective on, you know, and they're according to their, uh, this, uh, this is what I just heard on Bloomberg. They're, they're looking for it to blow out a hundred and go way up into this white area up there. Mm -hmm. And if that's, and of course the trend is pointing that way. So they're not, uh, you know, totally uh, smoking something. Um, uh, and if, you know, if we start making new highs above 80 to 85, you know, who knows, right? But if that's the, do you believe in that uh, view that uh, it could be going up into that neighborhood? Uh, you know, I, I no. I mean, I, I, I do. Th again, I think that the, I think that the majority of the inflation, inflation story is over. Just my own. Again, I, I will say something about trading, uh, oil, trading the uh, the crude oil uh, contract uh, on a daily basis, where you're out at the end of the day. It's been it's been very. Uh, if you have the mind that if we if we're very high in the, at some point in the day, look for places to go the other way because there's been many many times. I mean, the market is confused where to go right now, which means we could be a dollar or two dollars higher, and then all of a sudden by the end of the day be two dollars lower. That's a, yeah, yeah, a yeah. lot of money in crude, and that's been you can't see it on the chart. No, because sometimes it'll go down, then it'll come back up. It looks like a line, you know, it looks like it started low and ended high. It looks stable and it's not been stable at yeah, all. Yeah, halfway during the day. So I think you got to go to the, some of the shorter term uh, charts. We're looking at trading, but it's a great market to be trading. And I will say that the 
that the half contract in crude oil is, a, is another terrific contract. Yeah. Um, and I Cheap. won't even say yeah. for smaller accounts. Yeah. I would say even the larger accounts can be scaling in and out with that half contract. Yeah. It's a, it's a, and when you get moves like this, I mean, the market moves, it's a $500 move in a half contract when you move a dollar. It's a lot of money. Yeah. And, uh, so and, and you know, of- from your history, uh, Norm, one of the biggest pitfalls for uh, traders with the futures is leverage. And so if, right. you can, if you can manage leverage by going to the mini contract, you're probably going to be in there uh, for a lot longer lifespan than if you go with the big ones. And that's exactly why I like the currencies during, in the futures market, because, you know, yeah. we're, we're talking about a, uh, $125 for, for every penny in these right. currencies. And, and, you know, you can take three or four. Uh, positions in a you know a twenty five or fifty thousand dollar account be very comfortable with where you are as you're as if you like to scale in and scale out or like to I like to buy a, I like to take a position right from the beginning on a trigger and then scale out as um as it's maturing and leave you know the last one for what I call lewd and lascivious if it's going to do that but uh, but that's my style of trading and sure. uh, but there's a lot of styles that can be met and they're traded successfully when you have a small contract like that that has a lot of action. Yeah, a um, lot of volume, in and out, easy, good, pretty good, nice. a bit offers, yeah. that kind of thing. Hey, uh, Anka, uh, I know you know that you like to catch some good volatility, and that's you know kind of a great thing to catch. You know, obviously, nice short term moves or swing moves that can really give you some money. Um, do you see? Um, I was going to ask you a couple of questions. Uh, these ones that were out of favor, like pins, P I N S, or Snap, or Zoom, DocuSign, Twitter, Lyft. Mm. Um, are you Anka seeing any opportunities there or is that still catching a falling knife or what do you think? I don't even have these stocks right now on my radar because I've been focusing on movers and I don't think anybody should be focusing on stocks that are dripping throughout the end of November and into December because they're moving lower for a reason. Yep. They can be picked up as the January effect in January and not now. So technically speaking, institutions are still going to continue to dump if they still have positions that are getting ready for the year end uh, window dressing. Yeah. Uh, so they're not going to get picked. Uh, so, uh, you know, the yeah. snap, the pins, in fact, pins right now, even though it's not support, you're showing the chart. Uh, it's still very weak. Uh, no, this is very weak. Under- the only good news is, is the, the, uh, uh, relative strength is definitely giving you a divergence there, a pretty yeah. good sign. But again, it's not your cup of tea because you're looking for things that are already, uh, you're looking for cars that are already moving. Yes, exactly. So I'm looking. You're not for, looking to uh, do a jump start and hope it works and hope the yes. alternator doesn't work and you know what I mean. Yeah, and you're not. You're not a mechanic. Starts- you're not a mechanic. You're a driver. <laughs> I don't. I don't repair cars. I get into cars that are already running. You know. <laughs> All right. So anyway, yeah. let's talk about some of yours that are, you're looking at. Let's give you a, you know, a few picks out there for people to chew on. Of course. Uh, well, uh, I did call a trade earlier before um, I jumped on the show. It was and I did briefly mention it. UNH, I said the trigger is at 151. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so UNH already has triggers already 70 yep. cents higher. Yeah. Uh, and that is a swing trade going into 460 yep. and uh, back into the prior highs, which are into the 466, uh, four, exactly 466. So that's trade number one. Trade number two is Home Depot with massive strength. We have plenty of support below $400. It's ready to explode higher. Um, and if it trades above uh, uh, the high from last week, it's gone and it has a huge extension going on to the 425, 427. So it can really extend higher. Um, and these so your two things, my- just to give you a little sidebar here uh, on the uh, healthcare, you know that people are going to be buying into tech and everything else, but they're going to have part of their portfolio and something a little bit more defensive. And uh, healthcare is where that money is coming into, right? I mean, I a UNH, think, yeah, I mean, UNH, yeah. in other words, if you're going to do healthcare, UNH is the Cadillac, isn't it? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. You got it. Yeah, I now didn't... your consumer discretionary got whacked after being extended. It had a correction. Now you're thinking the con- if the XLY Absolutely. is going to, if the XLY is going anywhere, Home Depot's in there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. That's exactly my train of thought. Yep. And um, yeah, so I think that, yeah, L- look at the beautiful pattern It rotated today. It has a lot of upside. Uh, some other, let me see. Um, uh, so XLU, XLU is also okay, the very utility. Yeah, that utilities. was really, yeah. yeah, that was real close to some support. So your distance between get out and get yeah. in really well, 60, I think 66 is your line in the sand and you can play exactly, it long all day long exactly. until it gets taken out. 
Exactly. Look at that beautiful range. So yeah. super bullish. You think it's going to uh, pop 68 and get cooking, huh? Did you see? I mean, look at last week's low. Look at yeah. the Friday low that I put right onto the 20 SMA yeah. support area and now back up. And they could hardly bring it down. Yeah. And I that mean, was with I, a crash. A crash wouldn't even bring it down, right? No, no. Yeah. It's just so super solid. And you know what? It's really strong right now. Real estate. XLRE. Yeah. XLRE. Yes, XLRE, yeah. super strong. Again, continuing to, to deliver yeah. strong ranges. Look at those patterns. I mean, nothing can bring them down. Yeah, that's a very similar chart because they threw the kitchen sink at the market on Friday and these things took yes. it right in the head and said, okay, I'm going to keep going. Yes, these two are very strong. And of course, yeah. the XLK, the technology. Yeah, you're... These are the four more, uh, four most... Um, um, Top ones. Yes, yes. That's the strongest of all of them right now. Yeah, it's just unbelievable. Look at it. It's just not going any. I think lower. that's also a statement that rates aren't going higher. Yeah. So it's almost an island, almost an island uh, bottom there in a way. Yeah. That, that, that movement on Friday. Well, if you go look at their top 10 holdings, it's like uh, every stock you ever wanted to own, you know, mm -hmm. because everything in there every human being is using. <laughs> exactly. That's, that's a good point. Exactly. Yeah. So if you can't monetize every human being, who can you monetize, right? Exactly. You yeah. got it. That's Jim. why, oh, uh, you gosh. know, the Facebook stuff, when you hear bad news on it, as long as I hear 3 billion eyeballs, I know they're going to get some money out of them, you know? Of course. Yeah. Of course. It's a buying opportunity. Yeah. Because, you know, like I say, they say all of the... And now you're looking into the future where, and I think it was a very smart thing to change their name, not uh, unlike... Uh, you know, alphabet or whatever, you know, they, right. they, they, they just try to make sure they know it's just not sharing photos with your college teammates. You know what I mean? Which right. is really the origin of Facebook was what, wasn't it like sharing photos of uncle mm -hmm. Joe's birthday party? The Harvard. Yeah. Yeah. So they're trying to do what they're trying to make sure everybody knows we're, we got a lot of platforms here. We got a lot of stuff going on and we got a lot more coming on the boat. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Because when you get some of these companies like Google and Facebook, you know, you forget you're getting these other companies, which are also usually valuable. What am I looking at here? This is not the stock. Yeah, this is uh, Facebook or Metaverse or whatever. Oh, oh this is what, my... what is their new ticker symbol? I think yeah. it's FB still. Oh, OK. Because I'm looking at, uh, you know, something without any volume. Yeah, that looks weird. I don't. <laughs> oh, there you so go. I selected the wrong one. Somehow. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Yeah. So anyway, uh, but I mean, that's the weakest of all the fangs, you know. Exactly, and it's yeah. still strong. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, uh, Norm, did you have anything uh, like of, of uh, you know a, a, a certain market that you were kind of looking at? I think you mentioned the yen. Is there anything else you're sniffing around that you? No, think really, the yen, the yen, and I've got you know that iron copper looking for it to give me some sort of a, a, a signal. Uh, but again, my focus is um, is is seeing what happens um, in, in this what I what I consider a possible storm in the horizon and seeing some actual lower prices. Yeah, uh, in the uh, in the S and P, and I, I when when exactly does the uh, Santa Claus rally usually start? Is there a where's J Jake was here? Is there a specific date? I don't know. Um, We're trying to get Jake back on the show here. We got to get him back here to get some of his input because he's very good with seasonality. What the what Anka probably knows. typically what? yeah. When um I, I've been trading this for over twenty years, the seasonality um in um in December. And uh, they actually can deliver so a lot. So um, typically, is it after? Is it after the seventh? Rally is it after the seventh? Is it after the fifteenth? I mean, no, three to four days before Christmas, or okay. three to four days. Oh, okay, after. okay, great. So, so my theory may just come out. You know, before then, we'll see yeah. a, a, a check to even. You know, if it gets real dramatic to the October low. But I wanted to before I, before, I want to defer a little bit of my time. Uh, to, to Anka, because I know that she probably been concentrating a little bit on the technicals of, of Bitcoin. We haven't mentioned oh, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, let's hit that one and, quick. And, uh, and, and I, I'd be interested to hear her take on it. Yeah. On Bitcoin? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, some people are saying we've got this huge rally to the end of the year, 100,000 Bitcoin. Do you see that in the cards? It looks like it's trying to get going. Yeah. I, I, um, yeah. You know, it, I see it a lot of times as... Um, um, as a safety haven, <laughs> if you will, for a lot of reasons in the market. 
Uh, but I don't think that, you know, Bitcoin is going away anytime soon. Do you have a chart? Oh, you have the chart of Bitcoin. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So no, I, I don't think anybody's arguing that it, it's here to stay. Yeah. The question is, you know, uh, you know, as, as, as question is, under, are we going to go to a hundred grand by the end of the year? That's my question. Oh, do we see 40 first? <laughs> like I'm thinking. <laughs> I that mean, that's the, the big unknown. That's yeah. the big unknown. It depends on, you know, if you're an investor, it depends on your time horizon. Yeah, I yeah. typically, so I do, I don't trade Bitcoin, but I do have GBTC. Yeah, let's uh, throw that up and see what it looks like. Because most people would trade uh, GBTC. There's yes. only uh, 20 million or so wallets or something like that, or 200 with a million wallets or whatever. Yes. So GBTC was uh, yeah, was like actually our... Um, um let's say uh our surprise uh surprise trade let's say uh going into election last year and we picked it up at ten dollars uh and right now as you can see it's trading you know into the 47 so it's it, it's a really good investment and with really less risk than bitcoin right and you have access to your funds immediately no, there's no uh, doubt about it. I mean, this is really for a person like I mean, myself who doesn't want to get involved in virtual wallets. It's the only exactly, game exactly. Exactly. If you don't want to get involved in that, you have plenty of other opportunities in Bitcoin this way. And I think it's, you know, a better choice, especially if you're and just it starting millions and millions and millions of shares. So you want to get in and out. There's somebody there. Uh, oh, you know, absolutely. the other stuff uh, is much. Yes, much. But anyway, yes. looking at this graph, you would say that it, you know, if a person up. wanted to be bullish and yeah, put a stop good, right? under, especially after today's. Action. I am. Yes. And I'm bullish over 4750 again. So if you're okay. not in or anybody's not in, you know, I don't give financial advice, you know, but no, no, no. Um, we're just that's talking the opinion. Point. Exactly. Yeah. Like 4750 is the trigger point for the upside with yeah. the potential of uh, uh, of fifty dollars and back into the fifty five dollars, yeah, uh, back again, and it can potentially go there. Don't forget one thing that a lot of people are going to start getting their Christmas bonuses, and that's what one of the reasons why the Santa Claus rally is coming because if they feel optimistic, they're getting their bonuses and they're uh, you know opening trading accounts or you know institutional traders are putting their money back into the market and that drives the market higher. And that's the whole reason behind you know this Christmas rally because that's the optimism. They're, the money is getting is getting it is being put back into the market at, to work back into the market and deliver in more and to create more money. And to give you an uh, idea, one last thing, Anka, about 20 or 25 percent of uh, new home buyers are using Bitcoin profits as their deposit. Um, and that oh, wow, was, I didn't know that. Yeah, that was reported on CNBC. So, hey, you know, people are in there and people have made money on it. And when you have people in there and people have made money on something, if it starts going again, they're not going to be you're not going to twist their arm <sighs> to buy more. Sounds wow, that's a little, awesome. I didn't Sounds know like that. a black tulip to me a little bit, but yeah. Uh, but I uh, but before we wrap it up, I just wanted to mention that um, you know, focus. I think that what, what you're seeing, I think the excitement that you hear in, in Anka's voice and my voice, and and you know, this is a time where really some great things can happen. Everybody kind yeah. of tones down at the end of the year, but I think this yeah. year there's gonna be some opportunities. It's all about focus, and right now for the uh, uh, for, till the end of the day, I'm I'm, I'm giving uh, I guess a Black uh, Friday. It's thedisciplinetrader.com forward slash bf, like in Black Friday. Thedisciplinetrader.com forward slash bf. Those are 25 audios, one minute audio. I call them one minute uh, mastery minutes. I, I almost call them one minute motivators. But they'll get you focused, and that's really what you need in this kind right. of environment. Gets you focused on your trading plan to follow that. And, 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 and so that when the market starts to tear you up and you start getting ideas about maybe what you should do off your plan, you listen to a 60, 60 second uh, market motivator. And that's, we've got 25 of them all for, I think it's $127 rather than 197. It's a great way to have like a vitamin pill right in the middle. So this one forward slash uh, BF is in Black Friday, and, and that'll be till the end of today. So thanks, Eric, thanks for having me on again. Sure. And thank you for having me on with Anka. I get to pepper her with questions. <laughs> oh, and, and always, so like pleasure. I said. Yes, um, I see you, Norman, again. It's such an honor to uh, to talk to you. Yeah, it's good to have clarity when you're doing investing. And again, the disciplined trader can get you a little bit on a pathway where you can get some clarity on what you're doing, what you're trying to do, and that kind of thing. So it, it can kind of settle the uh, settle the waves a little bit in your mind, you know? 
So um, anyway, um, Anka, what would you like to let people know about as far as a special offer or anything you'd like to extend right now? Okay, so uh, we do have a special offer for anybody that wants to join uh, our uh, our um, uh, trading room um, membership. Um, you can uh, email me directly at info at and you're going to get a one hour class. Uh, it's going to be on demand about uh, risk management so you can take a better advantage. You can take better advantage of the membership. Uh, and you could also find us with more products and services at tradeoutloud.com. Great. And uh, thanks, you guys, for being here. Optionprofessor.com. We have a weekly market update you can get just by going to the website and putting your email in, optionprofessor.com. And we have a market alert out uh, on the VIX and what the VIX is telling us as far as the prices right now. So if you wanted to get that alert, go to optionprofessor.com and we'll get that alert out to you tomorrow. Um, again, thank you, guys. We had a great talk, and I think there's a lot of stuff coming up. So we'll be talking again real soon, hopefully. I'm going to send it back over to David right now. And again, thanks a lot for being here. Thank, you, Thank you. Thanks for having us. All right. Thanks, everyone. So just a quick reminder, be sure to subscribe to Timing Research on YouTube and your favorite podcast app. And you can also just go to timingresearch.com and the archive of this episode will be up as soon as I can get it posted. Also, if you have not watched this yet uh, or um, did not see this, we did a huge uh, Friendsgiving event uh, the week before last. Anka and I co-hosted that. And uh, we had 36 presentations uh, throughout throughout the week, uh, including uh, everyone who was on this uh, this broadcast today. So, um, if you have not seen that yet, just go to timingresearch.com and you can scroll back a bit and uh, see all of those presentations and catch up on those when you have a chance. So, all right, that's uh, it for today. I just want to uh, thank my guests again for today. Anka Metcalf of tradeoutloud.com, Norman Hallett of thedisciplinetrader.com, and the option professor of optionprofessor.com. Thanks, everyone.